familiar scenario. You're at a function and there are lots of people talking all around you. But what if you couldn't hear the conversation because it felt like everybody was talking to you at once? Well, you may not realise it, but it could be a problem called spatial processing disorder. Well, spatial processing disorder is an inability to make use of the direction that sound is coming from. Mum says she's telling Bass about our fires. A little while later, the wind is roaring like a freight train. Normally, if sounds are coming from different directions, we can focus. We can focus straight ahead. If we hear something more interesting out there, we can focus out that way, even though we look this way. But some children just haven't developed that ability. We know that we tend to see the problem when children enter school. Often children, they don't realise what the problem is. They know that they're not performing like their peers. They become very fatigued from trying to listen all the time and wonder what is wrong and become quite withdrawn. This is what seven-year-old Sophie was experiencing in the classroom. One-on-one -on -one or in this very, very small group, she was absolutely fine. But in bigger groups of, say, maybe 10 or more, she just withdrew and didn't really participate as much as what she does in a pair. In a noisy environment like this, Sophie would hear jumbled sounds. She couldn't quite pinpoint the direction the sounds were coming from. I felt like they all wanted to talk to me at the exact same time, so I felt a bit scared. When I realised there was something wrong, I told my mum that I couldn't hear very well in the playground and sometimes in the classroom. When Sophie and I were walking through a loud playground and there were some girlfriends calling out her name on the side, Sophie, 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 and Sophie walked straight past them and I got that sinking feeling that there was something terribly wrong. I originally thought she was deaf and we'd had some um, audiology testing and it had come back as though she'd had 100% hearing. Doctors suspect this spatial hearing problem could be triggered by inner ear infections. While you've got a middle ear infection, you've got a fluctuating hearing loss, so the input to each cochlea is changing. So we think these children just never learnt to do these clever combinations of the sounds of the two ears, or maybe they unlearnt it uh, while they had the problem. Until now, the treatment has been inadequate because getting the right diagnosis is tricky. Any of the conditions of spatial processing disorder, ADHD, specific language impairment can easily be mistaken for each other. The list of symptoms just have so much in common. That's why you need good tests that can tell one apart from the other. Sophie was eventually referred to the National Acoustic Laboratories in Sydney. I want you to repeat back what the lady says to you and ignore the tricky people. Can you do that? Sophie's spatial processing ability was tested to see if she could pick out voices coming from different directions. Good, well done. When Sophie was first tested, she struggled. No? As well as developing a diagnostic tool to identify this hearing disorder, the researchers have come up with the world's first computer game to help children overcome it. At home, Sophie practised the game every day for three months. We train the child to listen to target sentences always in spatially separated um, background speech. And the speech and distractors are always said by the same female talker, so they can't rely on any um, voice cues. The child learns to use those spatial cues only to be able to tell the target from the distractor. If Sophie gets the answers right, the game gets progressively more challenging. The games help me and I like playing the games. Now, three months later, she is being retested. The police heard the report. Brilliant. Dr Cameron showed me Sophie's results. 
She's moved right up and she is performing just like children without the disorder there, well within the normal range. So that's a great result for Sophie. That's a remarkable difference between these points. And, and we see this with all our research studies. So it's almost like after three months she's rewired her brain to, to be able to, to hear properly? We think that that's what's happened, yes. With, with the training, the, um, the neurons have reorganised so that she can get that result. We've also tested um, some children even two years down the track and we've found that they're still performing um, just like normal. Sophie has come leaps and bounds since her testing. She has become outgoing. She's now picking up lots of phonic cues. She's able to understand comprehension a lot more. Sophie's reading went up phenomenally. Something just happened. She must have been able to suddenly process a whole lot more, an exponential amount more. And I think she went up five reading groups in four weeks. Um, her handwriting um, improved as well. Her maths improved, everything improved. So it was a relief all round, not only for me, goodness, we've got a treatment that works, but for Sophie's confidence in that as well, which was just astonishing. It makes me feel fantastic to see research uh, flowing into practice and flowing into improvements in people's lives. And we're just glad that this can form part of our research. With my reading, I'd be able to hear the corrections my teacher and my mum have said, and it's been a lot more easier to understand what she's saying with the better hearing.